Hi kids, welcome to Bible Story Time. My name is Pastor George. I have today a wonderful story, a story of one of the great characters of the Old Testament, Moses. And in order to tell the story, I'm going to recreate the landscape of the place where the story takes place. I've been collecting figurines of Bible times for a long time, but you can actually tell the same story and recreate the landscape using different things. I invite you to use this at home. These are, you know what they are, they are from a toilet roll and you can dress them up, put a head, make eyes and recreate characters for the different Bible stories. Alternatively, you can use figurines like this one made with corks from different bottles and then you take the wrapper that comes around the bottle these are from a beautiful grape juice and then you can create different characters the main thing is to bring the bible alive so let's start and let's create the landscape okay so i start with some polystyrene and then i glue it together i make sure that i put some weights to uh, make sure that it's nice and uh, firm. And then I do all the rocks that I need for the project. I made them out of plaster of Paris. Don't worry if some of them break when you get them out of your mold because you can still place them and they will look fantastic. Now I put the sculpted modeling mix everywhere and then I begin to place the rocks all over the place I'm using a brush I also use a wooden spatula but the best thing to use are your fingers <laughs> you can put them all over the place and it was in this mixture that I tried to um, to put some reeds that I had prepared just to see what they would look like and here I'm making those reeds and um, it is a lot of fun making those reeds and I use baking paper and a little bit of glue and then you put them on top of that. Now we begin the process of painting the rocks with a dark color first followed by a lighter one to highlight all the rock formations and then with a solution of glue we will uh, put the sand to the mountains and to the sand dunes and we will also create the riverbed then i'm here making the famous reed that will go on the nile river this may be a little bit of work but it is really important because moses as a baby will be found among these reeds and here I'm making some grasses. This is a wonderful little machine that is called a grass static applicator that um, it's really, really cool because it allows all the little grasses to stick up. And here we have the finished product. We're getting really, really close. We spray a little bit of isopropyl alcohol and on top of that we spray a little bit of glue and everything will stay put for a long time then with a little bit of uh, mod podge pva you put it there and you secure all the grasses and once again you pour different um, different type of grasses and colors and and length of different grasses and um, I think we are just getting there. My mother-in-law decided to come and give me a hand, which is the fun thing of doing a Bible project because everybody wants to get involved. So tell your mom, your dad, your granddad, or your grandma, or anybody to come and join you on a weekend to do a wonderful Bible project. And you can create the landscape. It will take a while, but it's a lot of fun and the Bible will come alive. Here on the other side, I'm making a road. 
I'm using pastel and I'm kind of coloring and I'm going to put a little bit of pastel on this side so that the princess may have a bit of a, a walkway. And here is the final product. I uh, put different pastel colors on the on the mountain and um, I added the palm trees and the reed and we are ready to tell the story of Moses. Pharaoh realized that there were Hebrew people everywhere. The worst of it was that they all looked so strong and healthy. He thought to make their life really hard and miserable by giving them lots of hard work, carrying heavy loads and putting them to build cities for him, but with no luck. The Hebrews were more numerous than ever. It seemed that this plan did not work. So Pharaoh decided that there was only one thing to do. If he could not get rid of the Hebrews by working them to death, he would reduce their numbers some other way. And what could be easier than killing the children as soon as they were born? Imagine now the Hebrew families when they heard about what Pharaoh was doing. It made them want to leave Egypt, as they had never wanted to leave it before. They began to pray for deliverance. They needed help from God. When things seemed as though they couldn't get any worse, God sent a baby to the rescue. One day, a baby boy turned up in the house of Amrod and Jochebed. These godly Hebrews had a little girl called Miriam and a little boy named Aaron, and they had wanted another little boy so much. Jochebed was a devoted mother, and she made up her mind that the soldiers wouldn't get her baby, not if she could help it. She managed to keep him hidden for three months. One day, when Jochebed knew she couldn't keep her secret any longer, she got a bright idea. She would make a little boat, put the baby in it, and set it afloat near the bank of the river. So she wove a basket with reeds from the river, making it watertight by coating it with mud and pitch. When the pitch was dry, she fixed a soft little bed inside and tenderly, very tenderly, laid her baby in it. She kissed him goodbye, closed the lid, and carried the basket to the river bank. She placed it gently among the reeds. Then she went home to ask God to protect her child, leaving Miriam to watch what would happen. Miriam watched as the basket carrying her brother floated down the Nile. After a while, who should walk by but Pharaoh's daughter, attended by some of her maids. Her maids crowded around to look at the baby, wondering what to do with him. Still watching from afar, Miriam saw her opportunity and came up to the princess. Please, my lady, she says, can I go and call a nurse of the Hebrew woman that she may nurse the child for you? Go, she said, and Miriam ran like the wind to find her mother. The baby now had a new name, given to him by the princess down at the river. She named him Moses, meaning drawn out, because she said that she drew him out of the water. Moses was able to live with his family at home for several years. But sadly, the day came when Moses had to say goodbye and go and live in the royal palace with the Egyptian princess. Although it was tough for Moses, the princess was delighted. She made sure he learned all about Egyptian culture, history, writing, and traditions. Moses learned quickly and he was very smart, but he never ever forgot who he really was and what he had been taught at home. He remained faithful to God. In time, Prince Moses grew into a man admired and respected in Pharaoh's court. He was an expert in all the literature of Egypt, in mathematics, in economics, and in politics. He was a born leader and was wise and knowledgeable in all aspects of governance and politics, and in how to rule the Egyptian kingdom with power and authority. And if that wasn't enough, because he was the son of Pharaoh's daughter, he could have anything he wanted. The best food, the best clothes, the best house, even the best chariot. He was certainly destined to become a great ruler in Egypt. But in spite of this, he continued to be faithful to God, knowing that God alone was the source of all wisdom, power, and authority. He knew that God had saved him for a purpose, although he wasn't quite sure why or what that was just yet. 
Did God really want him to rule the entire Egyptian kingdom one day? The thought was amazing and scary at the same time, because even though he saw respect for Pharaoh's power and authority, he also saw the fear of the power that he wielded over the people. The Egyptians were master designers, builders and engineers. They could carve entire huge statues from a single mass of limestone. Moses often visited the construction sites to see how these massive works were progressing. Some statues had animal bodies and human faces that represented Pharaoh or other gods that people worshipped. Moses may have wondered how cool it would have been to have his face on one of these statues one day. But then he quickly remembered that the only one worthy of worship was God and no other. While Moses lived in luxury, the poor Israelites were being worked to death as slaves. They worked from early in the morning to late in the day. They worked the fields, tended the animals and worked in construction. Yes, that's right, on the big projects, making those massive statues. And because they didn't have power tools or forklifts back in those days, all the chiseling and lifting and moving and pulling heavy stones was done by, you guessed it, the slaves. The Egyptian taskmasters were harsh and often punished them with beatings for no reason whatsoever. The Israelites' life was not a pleasant one. Moses saw all the suffering of his people, and it troubled him and made him angry. He wanted his people to stop suffering under their evil hand. He saw that even though they had food and shelter, they didn't have freedom. They were destined to die as slaves. And the children, they could only look forward to a future under the hand of the Egyptians. Eventually, it got all a bit too much for Moses. One day, he saw an Egyptian mercilessly beating one of the Hebrew slaves. He decided to intervene and with one blow, knocked him to the ground. The Hebrew slave was astonished and ran to tell the others. Meanwhile, Moses was left with the body of the taskmaster. Even though the slave was saved from the beating, Moses had made a huge mistake, and it landed him in a heap of trouble with Pharaoh, who was not impressed at all, and sent his soldiers to find and kill him. But Moses ran away from Egypt and went to live in a faraway place, where he eventually married and spent 40 years looking after sheep. But it was in the middle of the desert, while looking after sheep, that God called Moses once again and tasked him with the biggest mission yet for his life. God used Moses in spite of his mistakes, past problems and objections. And he can use all of us if we are willing to serve and trust him. And that's where the story of Moses finishes here. The story will continue because Moses in the future will take the people of Israel out of Egypt. But it's what an incredible decision he had to make. He decided to follow and to trust and obey God. I hope that you too may take that decision and you can also follow God just like Moses did. It's not an easy one, but it is the most wonderful decision that you will ever make. God bless and we'll see you next time.